Hello everyone. I believe you guys must have heard about the terms Ruby and Ruby on Rails and you must have wondered what it is, right? Well, Ruby is a high level programming language interpreted like Perl and Python whereas Rails is a full stack web development framework written in Ruby programming language itself by David Henmeyer Hansen. Many people nowadays feel that Ruby on Rails is one of the finest ways for beginners to get their hands dirty with coding and quickly construct their own attractive fully functional full stack websites. The best thing about Ruby on Rails is that it's designed to get you building faster so you can see the results of your hard work in a quick time. With this session you'll learn about the benefits of this framework and by the end you'll also build a strong sense of why it is widely adopted. But before we dive into the technical jargon, make sure to hit that subscribe button and bell icon so that you never miss any technical update from IntelliPath YouTube team. First of all, let's first look into the agenda to sort of contemplate what's in store for us. The session will begin on a friendly note with an introduction to Ruby and what Ruby on Rails is. After that, we'll discover the benefits of Ruby on Rails or why you should learn it. Finally, we'll create a first ever simple program with Ruby. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. So without wasting any time, let's get started with the first topic of this session, what is Ruby? Ruby was developed in the mid 1990s by Yukihiro Mosumoto, a Japanese developer. And now it is one of the most popularly used programming languages. It's the basis for frameworks like Ruby on Rails and has an expressive and easy to use syntax. Nowadays, Ruby provides more than 60,000 libraries. Ruby has its own definite set of keywords and yes, it is dynamically typed programming language. It's completely free format language, which means that you can start coding from any line or column. Ruby also has set of reserved keywords that are only used for specific tasks and as mentioned, it's a dynamic programming language. Some other key features include the fact that Ruby like Java and Python includes exception management tools. It has a real mark and sweep garbage collector. It's completely operating system independent and it's exceptionally portable. So now that we have looked into what Ruby is, let's also look into what Ruby on Rails is. It's been observed that Ruby on Rails is not only hugely sought after in the tech industry, it is language and framework that's also very accessible to people of varying skill sets and experience. More importantly, it is less intimidating than some other coding languages that need a large amount of theoretical knowledge before you even write your first line of code. Mark Lansoff, founder of Learn to Program Media, puts it this way. He quotes, Ruby on Rails, or more accurately Ruby language and Rails framework, provides a complete set of application development tools. The benefit is that much of the heavy lifting of web application development is done for you. Ruby programmers tend to be very satisfied with the language, syntax and related suite of tools. That's the beauty of Ruby on Rails. It's meant to get you creating quicker so you can see the fruits of your efforts much sooner. You'll eventually be doing what you have always wanted to do, creating fantastic websites, right? It's also in high demand and Ruby on Rails can assist you in speeding this process up. To simply put, Ruby is a programming language and Ruby on Rails is a developmental framework designed with Ruby. In developer circles, Ruby on Rails is usually just referred to as Rails. Its primary goal is to make the development of web apps easier. It accomplishes this by generating default structures for your code, your application's database and web pages that your application will provide to the client. Ruby on Rails is referred to be a server-side or back-end application since it operates on a web server and feeds information to client programs or web browsers. David Henmeyer Hansen, the creator of Ruby on Rails framework, said in an interview on this developer's life podcast that he chose Ruby as the programming language because it was concise, easy to use and supported high-level software engineering patterns he needed and like PHP, which he had experimented with in past. Consider making a bookshelf to illustrate the distinction between Ruby and Ruby on Rails. Ruby can be symbolized by someone felling trees, cutting woods, carving shelves, hammering on nails or screwing the screws. Rails may be compared to an IKEA flat pack bookshelf. All of the components have been created 
all that remains is for you to appropriately assemble them if i have to put the above analogy into technical jargon then we can call ruby on rails as a mvc framework the mvc or model view controller framework is a design paradigm for developing online and desktop applications this paradigm is used by several different web frameworks including angular js for javascript django for python and cake php for php it organizes code by dividing the application's logic into three interrelated components the model represents the application's logic data objects and high level classes that are connected with them the view is essentially the data's visual representation in other words the template file finally the controller links the two by responding to user interaction and retrieving data from model to render in the view this pattern cleans up the application's logic and makes ruby on rails applications very flexible so now that you know what ruby on rails is you probably have a whole host of other questions the big one is of course why why should you learn ruby on rails what are the advantages of learning ruby on rails over all other programming languages out there will ruby on rails on its own be enough to build a career is it future proof how much previous experience do you need to learn it what kind of company can you work in once you have these skills and is it applicable to all web development jobs or just a selected few when you are just starting your research into a prospective web development career it might be difficult to distinguish between good and poor advice or rather experts and amateurs we want to clear all things up here over the next few minutes we'll discuss why ruby on rails is a great first programming language to learn the types of companies you can expect to work for with these skills the industry and career stability and finally some of the most successful companies out there using ruby on rails to create engaging high functioning and creative websites firstly why is it so good for beginners ruby on rails has a large online community of developers both skilled and inexperienced that is particularly welcoming to newcomers this implies that there is always a group of individuals to turn to for assistance if you get stuck or assist you in finding shortcuts to answers for a beginner this community provides general technical support as well as reassurance that you are not alone when you get stuck this active developer community is eager to assist you with any problem you may have if you want to meet people in person there are many ruby on rails meetings and hackathons in place all over the world the next reason we have conveys that you can apply your learnings quickly with ruby on rails framework rails in contrast to ruby is just a set of ruby shortcuts that allow you to quickly develop web applications as a result you'll have a website that you can use and share in much less time than if you have developed it entirely from scratch as a result your sense of accomplishment will be much stronger you'll experience less frustration and you'll rapidly reap the fruits of your hard work the third reason we have is ruby on rails covers both front end and back end the ruby language is pretty unique in this case it covers both the front end and back end meaning that as a ruby on rails developer you can describe yourself as a truly full stack developer you can literally build an entire website without having to outsource to other developers or rely on other members of your team which is a huge asset at a startup or as an entrepreneur this also means that you'll get a chance to learn some other languages for example html css javascript and ruby along the way with other programming languages you would not usually get this opportunity the fourth up is ruby and rails is beginner friendly despite the fact that ruby on rails app are mostly built in ruby there are various aspects that make it especially easy for beginners to master here are a few reasons why ruby on rails is fantastic programming language to start with the first one we have is you don't have to remember to terminate your lines with a semicolon like you do with javascript and many other languages white spaces and indentations are not important in ruby and python as they are in certain other languages many times you may omit elements like parentheses and curly brackets and your code will still work fine perhaps most importantly ruby is incredibly readable since it is written in plain english this makes approaching code for the first time much less intimidating finally we have great salaries and future prospects finding skilled ruby on rails developer remain difficult despite the fact that there are numerous open developer positions available there are many buzzing companies employing ruby on rails to construct their sites 
Rails developers are in great demand from both more established firms and smaller ones wanting to replicate their peers success. Below is a list of just few well-known startups built in Ruby on Rails. Basecamp, SlideShare, Zendesk, GitHub, Shopify, Hulu, Kickstarter, Pitchfork, SendGrid, SoundCloud, Square, Yama, Crunchbase and so on. Now why do these startups want their sites built in Ruby? Because as we mentioned before, it's a full stack. So one developer can do both front-end and back-end programming. At a startup, the more skill set you have, the more valuable you are to company. An additional advantage for startups is that by building their site using Ruby on Rails, they can get an MVP up and running very quickly. On that note, let's go and visit the code editor to develop the first ever Ruby program. Here is a problem that we are going to solve. The problem statement conveys that in a cricket bat showroom, there are only 10 bats left for sale. If a customer orders more than 10 products, the showroom wants to display the product out of stock message. Also, if there are no bats left, the showroom wants to display a message that the product is sold out. Otherwise, they want to thank you for purchasing our product message on the screen. If you look closely at this problem, you can sense the if-else conditioning engraved in that problem. So how can we formulate a solution to this problem? Well, let's figure that out by visiting the code editor. Now here, we know that the initial bats in stock are 10. So let's initialize a variable named stock to value 10. Stock equal to 10. We have another parameter that's items purchased, which is going to be user input, right? So to take an user input, we have a keyword gets. And if you want to display something, we have keyword puts. So what we'll do is, we'll name a new variable named as items purchased and we will get an user input. And then we will print this element. Now we have both parameters figured out. All we need to do is figure out the logic. The problem given is more of a conditional problem. So let's break it down into if else format. First condition is about if there is no item in stock, the program should return out of stock message. So we can put this as if stock is less than one that is zero, then puts the message, sorry, we are out of stock. Now next condition will be about checking items purchased are less than or equal to the amount of items available in the stock. If it is greater than that, then the program should display we have only 10 items inside the stock. So for that, we'll write one more condition that is else if condition, else if and here the input we have taken is in generic format. So we'll convert items purchased into integer using integer function integer items purchased stock then if this condition is true we will put a message sorry we only have 10 items in the stock okay now finally if the stock is greater than zero and items purchased are not exceeding stock limit then the order will be placed successfully for that, we'll write one more condition using else block, else puts thanks for your order and the stock value will be updated to stocks, stock minus integer items purchased. And again, we'll put out the updated items in stock, that is items left inside stock are stock and we'll finally add the end statement to end conditional looping. Now let's run this program and check if it is working fine. First, we'll order 11 items and if we execute this, the output will be the message which is what the problem is asking of us. So let's check that. So it's asking us to input the items purchase. So we'll enter 11. Yeah, sorry, we only have 10 items in the stock. So our program works fine. Now, what we'll do is we'll rerun our program. 
and now we will enter five items thank you for your orders items left in set stock are five so that means this program works accurately that's all we have for this session we hope this session was informative and exciting if you have any queries about the concept covered in this video then put them in the comment box below our 24 by 7 team of experts will be happy to resolve all of your queries if you have liked this video a thumbs up would be really appreciated also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and bell icon to never miss interesting and captivating educational updates from intellipath just a quick info guys intellipath provides full stack web development course in collaboration with enict iit guwahati the course link of which is given in the description below